Our speaker now is Ms. Jawahir Al Saud, Director of Patient Affairs, Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Humanitarian City in Riyadh. She is speaking to us about the multidisciplinary approach on healthcare enhances that patients positive experience. She will tell us more about that. Please join me in welcoming her to the stage. I would like to thank Al Musa Hospital for uh, inviting me to speak at this conference. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be joining you today. I am going to uh, talk about the um, impact of the interdisciplinary approach on the patient experience. Um, just to, I'm the director of patient affairs at Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Humanitarian City. Um, I will. The, the reason I chose this topic is that one of the unique aspects of Sultan bin Abdulaziz humanitarian city is the provision of an interdisciplinary care. We have been providing interdisciplinary care ever since the city was established back in 2002. And we have found that this has actually had a very positive impact on patient outcomes, patient satisfaction, and their experience throughout their journey with us in the hospital. I'm going to start with an overview uh, about the hospital. We are a private, non-for-profit rehabilitation center. Uh, we are currently operating at a capacity of 510 beds. We, in addition to inpatient and outpatient, we provide home health care, rehabilitation services, and nursing. And we also have the Child Development Center, which is a center that provides outpatient rehabilitation services for pediatric patients. We also have the Surgical Center of Excellence, which was established around two years ago, uh, with eight operating rooms, eight surgical ICU beds, and six medical ICU beds. In addition to ambulatory care clinics with 32 specialties, basically specialties that also support rehab, ENT, ophthalmology, internal medicine, dental, etc. And we have the Sultan bin Abdul Aziz Humanitarian, uh, sorry, Prosthetics and Orthotics Center. It is the largest PO center. Uh, which was established also back in 2014. We have had a PO department ever since we started, that the city, the city was established, but this was a small department. So uh, it was expanded in the 2014, and we have a very large um, uh, workshop that serves around 9,000 patients per year. The city is accredited by Joint Commission International since 2008, and our next accreditation hopefully is, starts uh, next week. And we're also accredited by CARF International uh, for seven uh, rehabilitation programs, specialized programs, the spinal cord injury program, the outpatient program, and we also have the spinal cord injury for outpatient, um, the stroke specialty program, the brain injury specialty program, uh, amputee specialty program, pediatric specialty program, and CHIRP, which is the Comprehensive Integrated Rehabilitation Program. We are also accredited by the uh, International Organization for Standardization for our PO Center. Uh, the accreditation is for our medical devices and the quality. And we were recently accredited by Sabahi as well. So, as everyone probably knows, patient the patient experience is based on patient centricity, where everything, all decisions, all uh, uh, projects, all programs evolve around the patient services as well, not the other way around. And the patient uh, experience is one of the three components of quality, which is um, clinical effectiveness, safety, and experience. So. Basically, no matter how effective the care you provide is, how matter, how, how, no matter how good your uh, outcomes are or safe your environment is, if, it, if the patient does not perceive that as, or perceive the experience to be positive, we really haven't done a very good or complete job. So the patient experience framework um, involves a lot of elements. So this is just some of them, not all of them, but probably 
uh, it's known to most of the people here in this uh, conference, uh, involving patients in shared decision making. So we're no longer, the patient is no longer inferior to the healthcare provider. Uh, we, they are, we are equal, we are on the same level, the patient needs to be involved. We are trying to encourage patients to take more charge of their, um, their, their treatment, uh, their manage, to better self-manage, and they need to be involved in the decision-making process in order for them to be able to reach that level. Uh, empowering patients to participate in care where possible. Um, for example, I'll give some examples from uh, Sultan Humanitarian City. The, our, we use several methods to involve patients, and I'm going to go through them at the end of the presentation, but just an example. Uh, we have a process uh, for written disclosure, which we do uh, for the, each patient when they are admitted. Once the plan of care is agreed upon or, or proposed by the team, they discuss it with the patient, and the patient will either agree, disagree, add, uh, or maybe modify as much as possible or as much as it's depending on the patient's case, of course. And then this agreement is put in writing, and the patient signs uh, together with the healthcare provider. So it's kind of a, a, a written agreement between the patient and the organization that he or she agrees to the plan of care. Um, respecting patient-centered values, um, of course, as I mentioned, uh, patient experience is based on patient centricity. So unless we demonstrate the respect for patient values, beliefs, and preferences, uh, we are not uh, really patient-centered. Welcoming um, uh, families, welcoming the patient's family uh, and friends to be involved in care as much as possible. Coordinating care across the continuum, uh, both health and social system. And I believe this is one of the gaps uh, that many healthcare systems suffer from is the continuity of care and making sure that patients transition between different levels of care is smooth. Um, patients usually fall between the cracks and their transition is kind of bumpy from one level of care to the other. Information and communicating with patients. Uh, delivering care with compassion. This is, I think, this is very important because as healthcare providers, we see patients on daily basis. We are, we get used to seeing patients uh, in pain, patients suffering, and sometimes for some people, the compassion kind of goes low because you're seeing this every day. So we need to make sure that this is, we are treating patients with the com with compassion. They. We call them by their names, not by their MRNs, not calling them a patient, uh, blindly with no names or nothing. So we need to kind of put some compassion in the care we provide. Managing, um, managing expectations and accessibility and continuity. Accessibility is also an issue with the increasing demand and no, not enough resources in many healthcare systems to meet the demand. The accessibility to healthcare and healthcare services is becoming an issue for many patients. So how does the interdisciplinary approach address these issues? The interdisciplinary approach basically enhances or is based on collaboration, shared goals, and coordinating high quality care. So by providing an interdisciplinary approach, each any patient will probably be attended to by more than just one discipline. There is no patient who will be attended by, to by one discipline. I'll give a simple example. A patient who comes for an appointment in the clinic is seen by the receptionist, the nurse, and the physician at a minimum, unless they need, of course, other services. So working, having um, multiple um, care providers provide care, that's not our goal. Our goal is to have them collaborate. It is interdisciplinary, um, to have some kind of common understanding. What this does is that communication between members becomes smooth. Everyone knows what the other one is doing. Uh, the care is not provided by uh, different disciplines, is not contradicting, which, is, which smoothens the plan of care. It reduces the chances of error because people are talking, people are meeting, people are working towards a shared goal, so no one is doing something to contradict the other. It addresses patients' barriers as a team from different perspectives. Now, speaking of... Um, people with disabilities, they are vulnerable, they, um, they have their complex cases with a lot of comorbidities, and they usually, talking about our patients in the city, they usually come from social and financial backgrounds that are not very, not very well uh, established. Even the family support is not really, sometimes it's not really to the level that you would want it to be. 
So the patient, the barriers um, facing these patients to go back to the community to regain uh, function uh, are, are different, and they're from different perspectives. So some need to be addressed by the OT, some need, some need to be addressed by the social worker, other by the psychologist. So if they work as a team, they look at these barriers jointly rather than the social worker solving the let's say social or financial issues or helping the patients, but when you come to the psychological needs of the patient, you need to go and speak to the psychologist. It's not, it's not really teamwork, so it puts a, an additional burden on the patient. Improves comprehensiveness, coordination, effectiveness, and the value of, uh, the value of care and patient satisfaction. This is just an example of the uh, structure of the team in the city. So as you can see, the patient is in the middle. Uh, the attending physician is the team leader. And then we have PT, OT, speech language pathologist, case manager, social worker, uh, psychologist, nurse, dietitian, patient relations, prosthetics, and orthotics specialist. Now the patient might not need all these services, and it, the, the, the team members will be tailor-made depending on the need of the patient, but this is just generally what the team uh, consists of. How did we promote the interdisciplinary culture in the city? Um, there were several um, aspects or elements that have enabled us to promote this culture in Sultan City. First of all, the nature of our patients. Uh, not to say that this is not applicable in acute care hospitals, but the nature of our patients being uh, rehab patients, they require several services. They cannot be served by one discipline. So this has helped the team and the work of one person or one discipline depends on the other. So this has helped the team or built the foundation for us to work as an interdisciplinary team. Commitment from leadership ever since the city was established back in 2002. Interdisciplinary, there was, there was strong commitment from leadership to an interdisciplinary approach. And uh, it has been this case up to this date. So it's not only on the level of the frontline staff, but also the leadership work as a team. Any performance improvement project, for example, any uh, new services that are established, each department that initiates something like that has to involve everyone else. And it comes, it feels like it comes by nature uh, in the city. So to the extent that sometimes we overdo uh, it, but we, no one makes a decision. We're not, we don't work in silos. Usually decisions are made in uh, collaboration. And when the staff see that commitment, that there's this level of commitment from leadership to an interdisciplinary work, it, it's more likely to cascade down to the rest of the organization. Also, our policies are interdisciplinary based. You, you can barely find departmental policies in the city. Policies are usually um, developed by multidiscipline or interdiscipline, and is signed by several departments uh, as part of showing commitment to this uh, kind of approach. Also, our orientation is done across departments. When new employees join the city, they usually receive orientation not just from the department, but they move through other departments that, especially those with work uh, related to their uh, work. For example, when a new physician comes, he doesn't just receive the uh, orientation for the medical affairs department, he goes to, or she, they have to go to case management, they have to go to health information management, they go to ambulatory care uh, department, just so they understand how the work flows between the departments. So from day one, they get the impression that these people or this organization work as, as a team, and they're more likely to, um, well, move with the same um, mindset. Also, we have uh, departments that are jointly managed. For example, home health care department is report administratively to patient affairs. However, nursing department and rehab department oversee the clinical aspect of home health. Uh, the training is done jointly. The interviews for hiring are done jointly by patient affairs and the, um, the clinical departments. The evaluation is done jointly. Policies are done jointly. The uh, competencies are done by the clinical department. So uh, the territorial uh, approach is kind of, uh, it's, it does not really exist. So uh, several departments are uh, joined, managed, managed jointly by uh, several uh, department heads. 
Also, we have interdisciplinary interventions. A lot of co-treatment happens um, in the city for patients, and not only under one department. You can find the patient who's receiving co-treatment with uh, OT and psychologist, the psychologist and the social worker. So this also gives the patient the perception that we are working as a team rather than working in silos. Uh, we also have the carryover skills between nursing and rehab. Uh, nursing, uh, when rehab, when the shift for rehab ends, they don't just endorse to their colleagues in rehab, they also endorse to nursing and vice versa. So um, this is one of the processes that is also very well established in the city and provides an interdisciplinary or enhances the interdisciplinary culture and communication between team members. The performance evaluation for our employees also encourages uh, interdisciplinary uh, approach and interdisciplinary work. The employees evaluated uh, on their level of um, teamwork, how well they coordinate, how well they communicate. So the employee knows that this is part of his, his or her evaluation at the end of the year. Then in 2011, we had CARF accreditation and it kind of shaped what we already had. Uh, it added to the culture and the practices that we have. It better, it better shaped them, let's say. The reason being is CARF is not the CARF standards. If um, any any of you has been exposed to it, they are not discipline um, based. They are program based. So it doesn't just evaluate nursing or rehab or medical affairs. It looks at the program. Uh, it looks, let for example, the spinal cord injury program. It looks at everything under this program: the nursing care, the medical care, the rehab care, the case management, everything. So it kind of helped just shape whatever we have and put it in a, a better and more stronger context and, and structure. So um, the, based on the Beryl Institute, there are four key elements for patient experience, culture, interaction, perception, and continuity of care. So culture, we already spoke about culture. Um, uh, in terms of interaction, as uh, maybe I'll mention some stuff that I have maybe just mentioned now, but just to how do we interact as an interdisciplinary team? This is what this is going to explain. How do what do we do in the city that uh, to meet the elements of patient experience? In terms of interaction, as I mentioned, our policies and procedures um, are all based uh, interdisciplinary based, and they allow for high level of interaction between or across departments. We have weekly team rounds on all patients, and patients are discussions regarding the patient's case happens in the patient's room, and the patient participates. And the case manager is a member of the team to ensure that the patient has a voice. So the team cannot just go and talk above the head of the patient and leave. The patient has to uh, give their input, ask, discuss uh, with the team as they uh, wish. Also, a week weekly team conferences for all patients. Sometimes, especially for pediatrics, they are, the parents are invited to join the team conference. Uh, for some patients, especially those who have difficulties or have uh, certain complications or issues that need to be addressed. Also, family conferences for all patients. Every patient will receive uh, or will have an initial family conference upon admission and then a, a pre-discharge family conference as well. Patient Advisory Council, uh, we have an active Patient Advisory Council. Members of, uh, from different departments are present there in addition to patients and some members of their families. Um, there were a lot of um, uh, initiatives done throughout this council. A lot of our strategies or our new uh, services are discussed and brought back to these patients and they will give us their input. For example, we recently expanded uh, one of our inpatient units uh, where they were going to um, build new rooms, basically. So we took feedback from patients and the patient advisory council on what are the difficulties that are currently facing them and with the rooms that are already there to make sure that we modify it. And when we had one prototype, uh, we invited the patients to come and visit the room to give us their feedback if they're happy with it or if there is anything that they would like modified. Uh, leadership safety walk-rounds. 
Uh, we have started this recently. Uh, every month, a member, uh, members of leadership will round on specific areas in the um, organization. Uh, the aim, the main aim of this uh, round is safety issues. They interview staff, they interview patients to identify any safety issues or potential uh, issue, uh, potential um, issues in the environment or in the process of delivery of care that could harm a, a patient in order for us to correct them. This information is taken back to the Quality Council and action plan is developed accordingly. Invitation to patients to enter, to uh, um, attend some of our meetings. Um, this has been going on for the past year and a half or two years. We are inviting patients occasionally to, or their families to attend the executive committee, which is the highest uh, level, the highest committee level in the organization, and they share their experiences with us. Not necessarily positive, but we also, we kind of try and bring um, uh, both. We would like to hear what's positive as well as what's negative in order for us to uh, correct if there are any uh, defects in our processes that are uh, bothering patients. Perception, uh, we try to work on certain areas to uh, help patients perceive us in a certain way. For example, perception of team-based care, as uh, I mentioned previously, the idea that we provide care holistically, the idea that uh, co-treatment happens, conferences, team conferences, team rounds, all of these help patients to perceive us as one team and that we are talking to each other instead of having the patient repeat himself every, every time one discipline enters the room. Perception of involvement, I mentioned, as I mentioned, the written disclosure, which is basically an agreement between us and the patient on the plan of care. Um, when we do the initial assessment from the patient, even some patients, uh, the, pre -assessment, the assessment is done pre-admission. We contact them by phone and uh, we kind of uh, get some data for them. And part of this uh, assessment is the patient's goal. What are their expectations? What do they want from being admitted in the city? And then it, this is done again after admission by per discipline, and it's put together to develop the plan of care. Um, then we also, also in terms of patient complaints, we have revised our process recently to include patients, ex sorry, patients ex expectations. Uh, we have, we've noticed that sometimes when we resolve complaints, although for us as, ad, as the administration of the hospital, we believe that we have resolved the complaint, the patient is still not happy. Um, we were, we don't, we did not really know what to do, so we thought of adding a part in the complaint process, patient expectation. So when you take the complaint from the patient, you have to put down what is the patient's expectation. Either we meet it, exceed it, or if it is an unrealistic expectation, we need to explain that to the patient and provide an alternative solution. Uh, perception of a healing environment, I don't know if you have seen the uh, photos at the beginning of the presentation, and anyone who has, not vis has visited the city would notice that the environment is very, um, it's very comfortable. It is, it, it's more like a spa than a hospital, and for those of you who have not visited us yet, please come and we will show you around. Perception of involvement, the, we have several uh, methods, the satisfaction survey, patient advisory council, patient attending meetings, all this gives the patient the feeling that they are involved uh, in any uh, strategies or plans. Continuum of care, we have the department of case management to ensure continuity of care and make sure that patient transition between different levels of care is done smoothly and in the most comfortable way for the patient as possible. Discharge planning, discharge planning begins from the day of admission. Um, barriers are identified uh, to, that, that might cause difficulties when we come to discharge and they're addressed, as I mentioned before, uh, as a team by the whole team members. Durability outcome measures. After the patient is discharged, one month after discharge, the patient receives a call from us to check on the durability of what he has, the treatment that he has received in the hospital. Are they doing okay with the equipment? Do they have any complication? Is there, are they able to follow the discharge recommendations or discharge um, um, the uh, treatment after discharge, the home, the home exercise program. So if any difficulties are identified, this is taken back to the team, and we either uh, visit the patient or ask the patient to come back to us if there are any difficulties that need to be addressed. 
Patient Information Center also was established to respond to patient inquiries. We were receiving a lot of um, uh, complaints from patients that when they're discharged, it's difficult for them to reach people in the hospital, especially case management. Case management, usually they spend their time in the unit with the patient, so anyone who would call the office would probably not get an answer. So we established the Patient Information Center to kind of give the patient the venue where they can <clears throat> actually reach someone and voice their inquiry on concern or concern. Uh, if the staff have the information, they will be able to provide the patient directly with the, with the information that he or she needs, or they will take the inquiry and make sure that they pass it to the concerned employee and that the employee will respond back to a patient in a timely manner. Uh, training for patient uh, on how to self-manage, this is done in the inpatient and also after discharge when visited by home health care, we kind of, this is one of our goals is to, to uh, encourage the patient to self-manage. We don't, being rehabilitated, uh, sorry, people with disability, we don't want them to come back and forth to us in the hospital. Our goal is to have them functional and able to uh, function on their own uh, back in the community. Uh, working towards community integration, this is also, um, it follows patient, uh, empowering patient to self-manage and to be able to take charge of their care and feel that although there's a responsibility on the healthcare organization, there is also a responsibility on the patient to uh, kind of be able to manage them, themselves and their illnesses as much as they can. Finally, just um, a, a short story. We have been working with interdisciplinary ever since we started. So we weren't really seeing, we couldn't imagine a setting where there's no interdisciplinary work. Um, and maybe the benefit was not that clear to us, except after we introduced the surgical program. The surgical program, uh, we were relying on locum surgeons a lot. And with locum uh, surgeons, it's difficult to manage their time to get them to do team conferences and team rounds and to kind of engage with the rest of the staff because they just come for a few hours and leave. And this was causing us a lot of problems. Um, then we have managed to work with, with, with the surgeons and kind of fix our schedules to meet their schedule and to get them to do team rounds and conferences and meet the patients with the team. The result? Before we started this, um, this approach, the surgeon had little to no interaction with the team. Communication was only done through the electronic medical record. There were no team rounds and there was lack of coordination of care. The surgeon would tell the patient, you're extended for one day, and then an hour later, the case manager would walk in and, say, and tell the patient, you're discharged tomorrow because there's no communication. After we implemented that, um, there are team rounds, team conferences, better coordination, um, and better discharge planning for the patients. So this was very obvious to us with the surgical program. Thank you very much.